Does your lack of control give you motion sickness? Do you have trouble getting mods into their slots? Are you convinced that Warframe is overrun with hackers and aimbots? You're not alone. Over 4 million hundred gamers suffer from SDA, or single-digit accuracy, with many of these crybabies turning to Reddit, or even worse, installing Fortnite. You don't have to be another statistic. Hey everybody, Apocryphate here with an important message. I have no idea what you're going through because I'm not a potato, but I still want to help. Maybe you're a toddler, haven't developed fine motor skills yet. Maybe you're old and smelly and way past your freshness date. Maybe you're a console gamer. Oh. Hey, maybe your mouse hand is possessed by the ghost of Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? No one cares. So how about you stop making excuses and start being Mesa? Every Mesa is powered by patented lock-on technology, which takes traditional aim assist, kicks it in the nads, and puts it in a sleek, form-fitting exoskeleton. All you have to do is turn your camera in the general direction of a planet, and Mesa will annihilate its entire population. But wait, there's more! We're throwing in not one, but two rapid-fire pistols that never need to be reloaded. Ammo restore? You can throw that blueprint in the trash, because these babies don't even use traditional ammo. They, they use, use magic. magic! And because we're pretty sure you also have trouble staying alive, we're going to include 95% damage reduction for the next 11,000 subscribers at no additional charge. Just pay shipping and handling. Choose from one of three great options, tailored to match your budget and Papega level, and take the first step towards a lifetime of compensating right now. Operators are standing by. I know what you're wondering. How much does all this cost? What are the side effects? And why doesn't Cinnabon offer a bacon variety? Hey, stop asking great questions. Stop wasting time and start being Mesa. Qua Tangent Wan, my people, and welcome to the complete guide to Mesa. Hardcore Endgame has been evolving since its inception, and I thought it might be time to officially move to a new format that consistently offers something for both newer players and veterans. You can expect my complete guides to have details on frame acquisition, ability analysis, gameplay tips, and multiple build options. This is a test run of sorts, so please let me know how you like this compared to Hardcore Endgame either in the comments below, in our Discord, or over on Twitter. Mesa is available in two variants, Prime and Non-Prime. The Prime version is superior, as it comes with two additional polarities, one Vazarin and one Matarai, as well as increased health, armor, and max energy. As of this video's posting, however, relics containing Mesa Prime's blueprint and component blueprints are vaulted. This means they are not currently available in-game, but you can purchase relics or her blueprints directly from other players on Warframe.market. As for the non-prime version, its main blueprint can be purchased with credits from the in-game market, and the component blueprints are drops from the Mutilus Alad V assassinate mission on Eris. It is, I think, going to be a very harsh and unpleasant kind of business. Yeah, it's a bit of a hassle, but here's the deal. In order to gain access to this mission, you'll need to craft a Mutilus Alad V assassinate key, and those require Mutilist Alad V coordinates. These coordinates come from invasion missions, which pop up randomly from time to time, or as possible drops from Deimos Defense, Survival, and Hive Sabotage missions. It's worth noting that just one key is required to access the mission for a full squad. Since you need to run the mission a minimum of three times, you may want to group up with other players looking for Mesa parts. <laughs> I hate bosses. And take turns using your keys. Mesa's passive grants plus 15% fire rate to dual wielded secondaries and plus 25% reload speed to single handed secondaries. It also gives Mesa plus 50 health points if she has no melee weapon equipped. The buffs are nice, but not significant enough to adjust a pistol build around or even drop a melee weapon from your loadout if that idea makes you uncomfortable. 
Ballistic Battery allows Mesa to store a percentage of all damage caused by her primary, secondary, and gun blade weapons while it's active. A second press takes all stored damage and applies it to the next shot from her primary or secondary. In Warframe, we're usually dealing with scores of enemies, so boosting the damage of a single bullet isn't terribly effective. That, that was the greatest shot I've ever seen. The worst. I was aiming at the horse. Additionally, ballistic battery's damage is only applied to the projectile itself, and not any AoE effects, making it even less appealing for weapons that enjoy high burst potential, like Kuvazar or Tenet Envoy. Its ballistic bullseye augment does very little to enhance this ability, simply granting status chance to the single shot. If you have Helminth at your disposal, this is the ability I recommend replacing with something much more useful. Shooting Gallery provides a weapon damage buff for Mesa and squad mates, as well as CC against nearby enemies. The damage buff scales with ability strength and stacks additively with damage mods like Serration and Hornet Strike. It generates a constant buff to Mesa's weapons and a second buff instance which transfers between team members periodically. Hi Curly, kill anyone today? They ain't over yet. Ah. While it's active, Shooting Gallery jams the ranged weapons of three nearby enemies every 1.5 seconds, or stuns the enemy if they have no ranged weapon. Since the CC is limited to only three non-selectable targets, it's unreliable and should be treated as a minor bonus. The weapon damage increase is the real power of this ability. Its augment, Muzzle Flash, blinds enemies near Mesa when an ally affected by Shooting Gallery assists in six kills. Though this adds reliability to Shooting Gallery's CC, I don't usually find it to be worth the mod slot. Shatter Shield is Mace's main source of survivability, as it provides up to 95% damage reduction from gunfire by deflecting enemy bullets. Deflected bullets can hit enemies depending on several factors, such as whether the initial shot was hit scan or projectile, the distance of the enemy versus the ability's range, terrain blocking the bullet's path, and the angle at which the bullet is deflected. Because of all these conditional factors, bullet deflection damage is another nice bonus with the meaty portion of the ability coming from its damage reduction. The Staggering Shield Augment, which gives reflected bullets a small chance of staggering enemies on hit, is only worth mentioning here for the sake of completeness. Peacemaker is, well, the ability we're all here for, right? Let's be honest, everything else just supports our ability to dual-wield revolvers that auto-target enemies, fire 7 billion rounds per second, and never need to be reloaded. You're probably seeing double. I have two guns, one for each of you. Before I talk about Peacemaker's damage, let's hit the basics. Activating the ability draws Mace's exalted pistols, regulators. This is a channeled ability, so it drains energy while active. 15 energy per second, which is affected by both efficiency and duration. A custom reticle appears on the player's screen, and when the trigger button is pressed, Mesa will fire two round bursts at enemies within the aiming circle. She'll continue firing if the trigger button is held, which will cause the circle's radius to decrease while the rate of fire increases. The Mesa's Waltz augment gives her the freedom to move and dodge roll while channeling Peacemaker. This allows you to reposition without wasting energy and progress through shorter sections of the mission. Now for the fun part, and honestly, my favorite recurring interjection the channel has. Nerd alert! Nerd alert? Seriously? Uh, formula, math, spreadsheet, there we go. Okay, this is what Peacemaker's damage formula looks like. I'll attempt to break it down in a way that makes it a bit easier to understand. There are three root multipliers at play, but two of them are extremely basic. At one end is Peacemaker's base damage, which is 50, and that never changes. And at the other end is the sum of all elemental mods attached to Mace's regulators, like Primed Heated Charge or Pistol Pestilence. The final multiplier gets a lot more complicated, but stick with me. There are three buffs associated with Peacemaker, and this multiplier is the sum of those three buffs, plus base damage mods. Believe it or not, this part of the formula is already simplified a bit. The individual buff calculations actually look like this. The first is a 150% bonus, which is affected by total ability strength, including constant sources, like Intensify and Blind Rage, as well as those from conditional sources, like Energy Conversion and Growing Power. This buff is considered always on by the game, thus it affects the damage number you see in your arsenal. 
The second buff is also a 150% bonus, which is affected by ability strength, but this time only from constant sources, not conditional ones. For game purposes, this buff is only active during Peacemaker, so you won't see it reflected in your arsenal stats. These first two buffs are applied additively with any base damage mods on your regulators, like Hornet Strike or the conditional bonus of Galvanized Shop. The calculation for the third buff might look a little bit crazy, but it's actually not that complicated once you understand how the buff functions. Remember earlier I said that continuously firing regulators ramps up fire rate? Well, it also ramps up this damage bonus. The bonus starts at 0%, then grows by 22.5% each time regulators are fired without pausing up to a maximum of 450% at 20 bursts. This 450% is affected by strength mods, such as Intensify and Blind Rage, conditional strength bonuses, like Energy Conversion and Growing Power, but only at half of their value, and base damage mods at 150% of their value. So the middle portion here determines the maximum damage bonus possible. To get the current damage bonus, we multiply it by the current burst count, zero through 20, at the beginning, and then divide by 20, the maximum number of bursts possible, at the end. Think of it this way. At max stacks, we're multiplying by 20 and dividing by 20, and those cancel each other out, so all that's left is the max bonus in the middle. And look, I understand, this is a lot of math and it can be confusing. If you stuck with me through all of it, but you still don't really get it, let me point out one important thing. Strength mods appear in three different places in this formula twice at 150% of their value, and once at 450%. When you add just one ability strength mod, this calculation makes it like you added it seven times. So diminishing returns are a factor from the get-go, and it's why you don't see knowledgeable build creators investing heavily in ability strength. Speaking of builds, the first one I've put together is for newer players. Now you may not have access to all these mods when you get Mesa, and yours may not be ranked up much but just think of this as a template and make adjustments as necessary. The Mesa build fits both regular Mesa and Mesa Prime without any additional capacity from Forma or even a Norican reactor. What you're going for is something balanced to get value from all aspects of her abilities. The Regulator's build also fits without any Forma, and you're looking for some base damage, crit chance, crit damage, and elementals. Now this right here, this provides more than enough damage to lay waste the entire normal star chart and 95% damage reduction because dying is a bummer. All of you can kiss my rebel dick. If you decide to drop an Orican reactor and Forma in here at some point, you'll be able to fully max out the mods and even start replacing them as you work towards endgame builds. Next up is my personal build for Mesa, which utilizes Hildren's Pillage in the first ability slot, as well as healthy amounts of duration, efficiency, and strength at the cost of range. The build lends itself to a fast-paced playstyle, which has you popping in and out of Peacemaker regularly to cast Pillage for both the overshields and enemy shield slash armor strip, while also maintaining 100% uptime on Shooting Gallery and Shatter Shield for the damage boost and damage reduction, respectively. I find this works well in mission types such as Exterminate, Sabotage, or Rescue, where enemies appear in smaller packs rather than a constant stream, and moving from one location to another is necessary. All this ability usage is manageable, thanks to maxed out efficiency, keeping energy costs low, and enough duration so our buffs only need to be refreshed every 45 seconds or so. As I mentioned earlier, there's no need for a ton of ability strength, but all of our abilities benefit from what's here, most notably Pillage, which removes nearly half of current enemy armor and or shields each time they're hit by its wave. Tanking range only hurts what I consider the secondary and less important aspects of Shooting Gallery and Shatter Shield, and has virtually no effect on Pillage or Peacemaker. Mace's Waltz not only allows us to reposition as needed during Peacemaker, but also activate Rolling Guard while channeling our DPS factory. Finally, I've got my take on what I understand to be the current meta build for Mesa. It functions better in endless missions, or those where you'll remain in one location for extended periods. This is due to the fact that it revolves around trading health for energy via Hunter Adrenaline, and energy for health via Gloom, which allows you to stay in Peacemaker for much longer than usual. Managing this give and take is like dancing on a razor's edge, and requires a good bit of experience with Mesa to use to its full potential. Use Gloom and Shatter Shield for too long, and you take zero damage to health, thus run out of energy. But don't use it often enough, and you're bleeding out. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. 
Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. Needless to say, this is not a build I recommend rushing into or expecting to master immediately, but its power is undeniable and well worth the time investment if you're a fan of the Gunslinger. Have any questions? Think I missed something big? Want my recipe for Cinna Bacon Rolls? Leave me a message in the comments section down there, in our Discord server, or over on Twitter. By the way, you can find all of my builds for both Warframes and weapons at Apocryphate.com, including many I haven't had a chance to make a video for yet. And please, don't forget to let me know what you think of this new guide format. Dad, please! I'm only an elected official here! I can't make decisions by myself!